Hey guys and welcome to Deadhead TV. I'm Callum, the host of this episode. Today we're looking at basic scare actor makeup. Because usually when you're working on a scare attraction, the makeup artists don't tend to have a lot of time to do it everyone. They tend to concentrate on the key icon characters or ones that need to help with lots of prosthetics. So being the actor, you do have to learn the basics of, of makeup. This tends to be a looking at the base work and also hollowing of the eyes and cheekbones to give you a really sort of gaunt and distorted look. Because being, being one of the actors or characters, you really need to dehumanise yourself to obviously get the, get the public thinking you're not one of them. Okay, so one of the first basics is the base colour. What you need to try and do is, as I said before, you need to try and dehumanise yourself. So what I've gone for is a colour which is by Snazaroo. It's called Barely Beige. So basically it'll give me more of a gaunt and distorted look and will hopefully try and hide the sort of fleshy colours that I have. But as you can see, a lot of blood around the uh, skin area. So a lot of blushing and sort of <laughs> a lot of uh, pigmentation on the skin. So this will basically hide that to give you more of a gaunt and dead look really. Let's quickly go over that and show you. As you can see I'm just trying to hide as much of the human in me as possible. Now, when you're doing the base, if you can try not to go over the eyes, because that is the next bit we'll have to do. I want to try and leave the eyes clear so that you can start doing the shadowing of the face. As you can see, I'm start, starting to get more of a base colour now. Not a lot of red poking through now. As I said, I tend to use a lot of Snazaroo, which is a water-based paint. Uh, the only con to this really is that uh, after a lot of sweating, it can sometimes rub off. But I would rec recommend using a lot of hairspray, as the hairspray acts as like a barrier and will keep the makeup in place. So that you get a can of spray and spray it all over the face that acts, <laughs> acts as like a barrier. I would also recommend uh, when you're doing the attraction to go as far down the neckline as possible because at the end of the day this is makeup not face paint. But unfortunately I'm just going to do the face myself personally just so I can show you the basics. Yeah, all that red colour is starting to leave my face now. Ooh, straight here. It's now ready. It looks like there is not a lot of blood circulating in the face. It looks like I've been sitting quite a while. <laughs> Now you can also use, of course, grease paints or creams. Um, grease paints do tend to, be, tend to be quite good and quite durable. Like a lot of the Ben Nye stuff tends to work out really well, but uh, it tend to be, tend, tend to be sorry, quite expensive, but it really is decent stuff. If you're starting out, I would definitely recommend Snazzery, as it tends to be quite cheap, it works really well, and it's easy to blend. So that's near enough the base done. Eyes. Or the eyes, sorry, the bridge of the nose. So that, as you see, I've got now more of a sort of dead face. A little bit more gone. Next onto the eyes. Okay, so now the eyes. What what sort of effect we're trying to go for here is hollowing of the eyes. 
they can look like they've more sunk them. The stuff that I use is the Mayron uh, Bruise Wheel. It's pretty good. Uh, I've used it on a couple of jobs now and it's really worked out well. Another one you can go for is also Ben Nye Bruise Wheel or the Monster Wheel because that tends to be quite a good product as well. So as I said, this is the Mayron one and uh, it's at about roughly 18, 18 pounds uh, depending on what shop you go to but it really is a de decent pit kit this. Okay, so what you want to start off with is the light red colour, so this one here. This will give um, more of a dead look to the eyes, as if the uh, uh, sorry, as if the blood was sort of starting to pull around the eye. And then we add a purple colour to make it, make it look like it's been sitting there for ages. So we start off with the red, right there. And what you want to do, uh, try if you can go as thick into the corner as you can and just drag it back as you see I've got some on my eyeball you can use a brush similar to this if you want but otherwise you can also use your finger as well obviously if it's your kit use your finger if it's someone else's kit don't because of uh, contamination So then, then when you've got a steady bit on your face, then use your finger to blend it into the skin. So if I'm not talking much, I'm actually trying to concentrate, believe it or not. On, bring it out a bit. So it blends in beige. As you can see straight away, my eye looks more like it's more sunken than this one and gives you more of a tired eye look, which believe it or not, I'm quite tired myself, so I don't know if I need much of this. Also, a good base for zombies as well. Tends to work out quite nicely. If you like me just then, you just messed up slightly. Just smudge it over. All bruises and ice kind of Also, if you want references, you can also look at um, different pictures of bruises online, and that will also give you an idea of how you should colour and stain your eye. It's good if I that, so I'll quickly close my eye for this bit.
doing next is the darker colour of the purple. A bit more something. Do the purple. Purple. Which is blue light, really, which is this one up here. Yes, just checking. Make sure it's not black. No, it's the purple. So what do you want to do now? Go back under where you've just done and spread it out. Now more looks like the blood's been sitting in the eye and once again gives you more of a tired and gaunt look. Of course you should always consult your makeup artist or your director to see what sort of image they're trying to go for for that particular maze. Second eye. There you go. So now I've got more of the tired gaunt look. Now it's the contour, which I personally can't do very well. What it is, it's following the cheekbone down, down across the skull, down across the bottom of the jaw, which with men it's basically the beard line, but then obviously women follow the jaw down. So you can do a similar sort of thing, you can do the, the red first and the purple. But I'm just going to get you to the purple just to show, show you what the sort of thing we're looking for. <laughs> As I said, I'm not particularly good at this bit, but I should give you a go for you guys. This tends to give a more sort of skeletal look in the creature.
And as you can tell, this is what I don't tend to do. The, <laughs> the contouring very much. So I'm not very good at it. And also, you can, if you want, do the temples as well. I don't tend to do quantum because I just make a complete travesty of it usually. So I tend to usually cover it up with blood. That's usually what I tend to do. <laughs> and then if you wanted to you could also add veins and other bits and pieces like that, but once again, I'm not very good at the technical. I just get everything done basic. <laughs> okay, another thing you can do to bring out the features in your face is, once again, a little bit of contouring, but it's around the nose and uh, face and cheek regions. So what you could do, for example, around my nose here, like these little, little shadowy bits, which you can then highlight a bit more. Same as I just did there. I did my snow. These bits here. When we say the finishing touches, this is mainly the blood. Okay, so with blood, depending on what sort of maze that you're in, if you're in a dark maze, you don't need the real, real sort of blood. Sometimes you can just get away with red marks to symbolise cuts and scrapes. I tend to use stuff called fake scratch or fresh scratch, depending on which company you buy it from. I would recommend, and I'll take find the logo, this stuff. It's from Ben Nye. I'll try to find the logo. 
and he scraped it off. This is Ben Nye Fresh Scratch, fantastic stuff, but once again, a bit expensive. So I should be doing the, using the tree pot alternative. It's a bit light for my liking, but it just gives you an idea, okay? So what we can do, one of the main things that I tend to do on myself and the other guys that I work with is I start off with a generous bit of blood from the nostril. So it gives the illusion of a broken bloody nose. And then, oh, sorry, there's a little bit of bogey up my nose. As I say, this stuff's a bit too light for my liking. It's good just to show you what I mean. Okie dokie. So that's that bit. You can also add, if you wanted scratches, which you can use, this thing called a stipples brush. What you do, pop a bit of blood on and then bring the brush uh, to a direction. And it'll get to symbolize, or symbolize, it will simulate sort of like scratches and scrapes. So we do put a bit of blood onto the stipple brush, like that. And then let's bring it back. Once again, your spatula. That's about it. That's the basics of scat to make it. Do it again. Bye.